How you doing, man? I'm great. How you doing today? Uh, I just want to talk to you about how you, I guess, how did you hear about your physical therapist and how did you, I guess, network with them? How did you connect with them? Yeah, so I was super fortunate. Inside of our gym, we have a physical therapy office. The local hospital here actually runs physical therapy right out of our gym. So we're pretty tight there. They have about four or five therapists there. And so I just started chatting to all of them. And one of them kind of had a connection with, he graduated from Oregon State also. And look, seven, and, you know, start chatting a little bit here and there. And this was even before I started the, uh, the mentorship. And then once I realized, I was like, you know what? I think I need to reach out to this guy and kind of see what he's got going on, learn a little bit from him. Um, he was super welcoming and invited me down and that's kind of how it all started. Kind of fell right into my lap actually. Dude, that's dope. That's really good. Uh, what do you think was the biggest benefit of networking with that physical therapist? Well, already it's going to turn into something, some more opportunities because he's already talked to the, uh, to the CEO here at the YMCA and he wants to run like a knee health or knee strengthening seminar. And he's like, yeah, I, I told her that, you know, me and you should do it. And she was on board. So I think we got something in the plans to set up. So that's, I think it's just going to build on itself. So we'll see, what, we'll see what happens. That's freaking awesome, dude. I love it. Yeah. That's cool. Like what advice would you give somebody else? Like another, I guess, fitness professional to in your spot, right? Like you're kind of just starting out, kind of getting the feel of everything. Um, what advice would you give when they go and talk to a physical therapist? Yeah, I think uh, one of the great tips that I got was to show up with, you know, maybe like a gift or something like coffee. I mean, that kind of sets the tone. It shows that, you know, you're not a cheapskate. You're not just trying to take, take, take. You know, you want to come in there and give a little bit. Um, firm handshake, smile, say hi. And th then at first kind of fill out the situation. At first, you know, I went in there just planning on just kind of being a fly on the wall. And, uh, but he was super open. The client was super open. We kind of had a little chat session to start and it went smooth th from there. So, um, I think just showing up, making that good first impression, you know, bringing like a little offering, like some coffee goes a long way and kind of sets the tone for, for how it goes. What did you guys go over when you kind of shadowed him? Is there a certain thing that maybe you, that he wanted to show you or you were asking about? Yeah, so this particular client had some uh, knee injuries back in the early 90s, uh, torn ACL, or partially torn ACL that wasn't repaired, um, also a torn meniscus that had been repaired, and she had been dealing with some pain for years, and uh, recently, a couple months ago, had fallen on the ice and uh, really messed it up, and from that point, had some nerve entrapment in the leg. And he told me, he's like, when you come in here, this one's going to be interesting because this is going to be a whole new, this is very rare. Um, what happened was, is the nerve running down the peroneal area of the leg on that lateral portion of the calf. I think it's the peroneal nerve, but yep. it was pinched. Yeah, it was pinched right there because I think because of her movement pattern, it wasn't necessarily because of the injury in the knee. Is because her movement pattern was lacking and it was pinching that nerve and causing her a ton of pain. Well, he just went through like some different, types of modalities some different movements, a little bit of, I think it's called grassing technique, you know, a little bit of massage, this and that. And he had been doing that for a couple of weeks and he was able to release that nerve. And from there, you know, slowly starting to strengthen the knee. And so we just kind of talked about that, that nerve entrapment that I'd never heard of before. Um, but what's funny, the nerve, that nerve actually leads to the skin. It doesn't even lead to the muscle or anything like that. So really? it's not necessarily involved with the, yeah, it's not necessarily involved with the knee. However, it was being affected because of the knee. So that was interesting. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, was the physical therapist like surprised by your anatomy knowledge? I think he was. I think he noticed right off the bat because when he started to talk about the peroneals um, or that nerve right there, I asked, you know, is that does that run through the peroneals? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, there we go. And then from there on, we just kind of start talking about ACL injuries and he started talking about some studies he went through in his college his professor performed some studies on you know strengthening the quad in regard to uh healing ACL injuries and stuff like that and then we just started talking about the knee and you know it was funny because um once we started getting into the uh the lifting portion or the loading portion of the session 
um, we were doing a few things and I actually mentioned, or just asked, I was like, do you ever do anything to load the, you know, the anterior tibialis, you know, do you ever do any tib raises? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So they actually did one of the things that I mentioned. So the cool thing about it, he was super open and uh, just made it easy to talk to. Nice. So you found somebody that you kind of mesh with and you can, you know, run ideas and bounce like kind of the uh, brainstorm stuff over. Exactly. That's it cool. felt super comfortable. I didn't feel like I was like at a lower level, even though his knowledge of anatomy is way more, you know, way up here compared to me. I felt like I was comfortable talking to him and some of the questions, you know, he answered. And then I was just able to kind of build off that and ask kind of like clarifying questions so that I could show him that I kind of, you know, that I knew what he was talking about. Yeah. No, it's really cool to see, like we were talking earlier, um, like how far you've come from where you like started in the internship and then you like got your CPT in the internship and then you were like, I don't know if I'm going to do this mentorship with Chris. I don't know. I'm not sure. And then just like watching your Instagram and your posts and what you're doing. I'm like, holy cow, dude, this kid's doing it. Like he's taking it, taking it by the horns, you know, and just like going full fledged and then making moves with a physical therapist. Like, how do you think all of this has changed your trajectory um, as a fitness professional? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. I wake up every morning and I think about all the things that I have to do and I'm just, I'm a little overwhelmed, but I just realized that you just got to do it. You know, you just got to go forward. I went, I went for years and years and years hating the job I was in. I was working in labs and I just, I, I did it mainly to support the family and I never had the courage to step out and take that leap and, and try something new, you know, and start from ground zero. Cause you know, once you make a little bit of money, you feel like you get a little bit comfortable and you know, you're paying the bills, fine. You got food on your plate, but it's not really bringing much, uh, much joy or success in your own life. So I just, this is what I want to do. And this is what I love. So, you know, I'm, I'm all in. And if I make mistakes, that's fine. I'll learn from it and I'll keep going forward. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. You say that because a lot of people would just stay in a comfortable job and just, you know, make their wage insurance, all of that. And you're like, yeah, I think there's something else out there for me, you know? which is really cool. And you're like, let's figure it out. And, and uh, it's extremely, I guess, mature of you to think about, like, you're, you, like you said, you're like, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to fail at some stuff. Like that's, you know, it's normal. You know, and a lot of people think like if they fail at something, like, you know, that's, that's it. Like, Oh, I failed. Like they think of it as so hard. Um, but the, I explained it to my son is like, you have to suck at something before you're really good at it, right? Like everybody has to mm -hmm. suck at something. And that feeling of sucking at stuff, it sucks. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. But, and I've been there so many times. And like, if you can just grind it through that sucking, then, I mean, you're golden, right? Like that's because most people stop at the sucking. And it's like, if you just keep yeah. pushing, like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, because I went, for years in what I was doing and it sucked. So, I mean, how could it suck more than that? So I just look at that that way. It's not going to suck less because I actually enjoy this stuff. So if I, if, if there's roadblocks, it's fine. At least I have that, I have that, uh, what is it? You have that underlying, you have that underlying feeling of like, this is your purpose. So if you have that, I think you can get through it. Oh yeah, dude. No, like I like seeing all your stuff that you're putting up there. And now that you've, uh, got a physical therapist on your team i mean it's it's a little original where he was already there but i mean i think a lot of other trainers might not even approach physical therapists because they're intimidated they don't know anatomy they don't know the programming how you do and they'd be worried that the physical therapist looks at them crazy i know i would when i like when i first started i didn't know anything so i'm like <laughs> you know i would definitely feel that way um but it's really cool to see how you progressed just over these last few months to get better and better. So um, I guess, is there anything in your, I guess, trajectory that you've seen that you might be able to help some of the people maybe wanting to get into show fitness or not sure about it, or maybe that are in right now that you saw as like a challenge that you had to push through? Maybe ask that. Can you ask that like in another, like rephrase that question? Like what, what do I see? Cause I, I've been pushing, I've been pushing show up fitness to people I've talked to. I've already had two people to say, yeah, 
you know, I thought about training potential. I said, Hey, you got to check out show of fitness because they, they'll teach you these things. And I'll tell them, they'll teach you anatomy. They'll teach you how to build your business. They'll teach you customer service. They'll teach you all those things. Um, so I've been, I've been pushing it, but what do you like? Maybe what do you, so if somebody's you like, exactly? if somebody's on the fence of like, I don't know, this is, I don't know about this. I don't, I don't see the value or maybe like, if somebody's in show up fitness and trying to find their way and trying to figure it out. Right. Cause mm-hmm. it, if like somebody comes in and they're like, Oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. Like this is so much stuff. Like, do you have advice for these people on um, what you did to, to learn everything and get better? Yeah. I think, you know, it kind of comes with the name of the company to show up. You just gotta, you gotta get in there and you gotta get your, you gotta get your hands dirty. You got to, Every day you gotta, you gotta be available at all times, regardless. I mean, I have, we just had some pups. So I got, I got six dogs right now. It was nine, six dogs. We're still trying to sell some and three kids at home and, you know, decent sized property. So I'm busy, but that's, that's no excuse. You gotta just, you gotta push. And I've, you know, in the past I did a lot of drinking, a lot of stupid stuff and it's just wasted time. You know, there's, there's a lot of hours in the day. And if you, can plan it out, set your goals. That's one thing that I really appreciate about show of fitness is that they have swift analysis, something I never really thought about. I was like, Oh, well, I, yeah, I have goals. They're in here. But if you mm-hmm. don't, if, if you don't revisit those goals and see and have like short term, you know, medium and then long term goals, then you, you're just kind of, you're just treading water. So that's one thing I appreciate about show of fitness. And I think it, it's mainly just revisiting that those certain things, and uh, just being open to trying out new things. Cause like the social media thing too, two decades away from <laughs> social media. I thought it was, I thought it was just all, you know, vanity and a bunch of garbage. And, but I realized it's like one of the best marketing tools you can have. So speaking, you know, was something that's really, really hard for me, but I just said, you know what, I've seen other people do it. Um, and my wife actually was the one who started doing that first. She started her own sales and jewelry online and it was tough i saw her struggle through it but she said just do it and you'll get a little bit better at it slowly but surely and just kind of build on that and you know eventually things will start breaking free and you'll start getting more opportunities so you know just just do it if that's what you really want to do if it's your passion then just get started start from square one and just get going yeah no i can i can definitely resonate with the social media stuff like i was very resistant to do it for a long time and then uh Danny Pelko, I don't know if you've talked to her, um, but she was the social media is. person. Um, mm-hmm. I know who that is. She was like, just shut up and talk. Like, that's all you got to do, just talk. Just, <laughs> just do it. Like, why are you complaining? Like, I don't know. And I resisted for so long, but then I'm like, it's actually fun, dude. You can make it a lot of fun. And I and I try to do that. And it's, you know, find people that resonate with you. You're not going to, not everybody is going to be your cup of tea. Some people are going to look at no. you and be like, what the heck? So it's just, you know. People will find value if stuff you're putting out and you'll, you know, find the people that want to want to work with you. So it's pretty cool. And that's what I appreciate about show up fitness is that, you know, they're not just talking about um, just training and exercises, quote unquote. They're actually talking about business, like how do you deal with people? I mean, that's a huge aspect of it. That was something that really um, opened my eyes when I started training is just dealing with a human being. It's a completely whole, it's, it's just a new animal, something that I've never had to go through before. You have to deal with their feelings, how they're doing today, they have a bad night, what they have for breakfast, you know? So I, I appreciate that, uh, you know, show up deals with that business aspect too. So going back to how would I tell someone if they're wanting to be a trainer is get them to show up because they'll not only teach you the anatomy and how to train, but they'll actually teach you business too. Cause we got to make yeah. money. Oh yeah. Everybody needs to make money. And it's, uh, that's the thing is like, People are so different. You come across like I can have a client that's one way, come in the next hour. I have a client like over here, like they're complete opposites. And you have to pivot and have a conversation with that same person, switch all your brain function to that. It's a very mentally, I guess, taxing. eh, It's not taxing because I enjoy it. I, I enjoy talking to people. But it's a lot of focus, right? And then you have to remember what this person is into, what's going on in their life, what's, uh-huh. you know. So you have to be personable. Like, you can be, like, the best trainer on the face of the earth, but if you can't talk to people, like, nobody's going to want to work with you. Nobody's yeah, going to exactly. work with you. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think that uh, 
that that's a huge part of it. And that's why, that's why I like learning from like what Chris said, you know, ask a good, like you have to actually come and prepare to the session. You're not just going to go and treat, you actually have to come up with a question and say, Hey, like, you know, you got to open it up so that they'll open up to you, you know, because they don't, yeah. I mean, they're there to work out. Yeah. They're there to work out and all that stuff, but I mean, they want to have a good time at the same time. Yeah. I like to ask my clients silly questions. Like, would you rather have wings or gills? And they're like, what, what kind of question is that? Like, would, what, what, what one would you rather have wings or gills? Like, would you want to fly or <laughs> you want to swim in the ocean? And they, they're just like confused. That yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> I have fun with it. But I appreciate you taking the time out today, man. Um, I can see a lot coming from you. I, I'm excited to see where working with that physical therapist goes for you. And, you know, how your how your knee camp goes. You'll have to keep me updated on that and let me know. I will, man. Appreciate the time. Heck yeah, dude. Anytime.